for Dr. McDougall for some reason. <laughs> oh. Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today is day two of Food is Climate Week, a very, very important book. And if you buy it, you'll get lots of bonuses. This information will be in the show notes as well as the chat. It's a book that I and many other people contributed delicious new recipes to. And here to introduce today's guest, we have the author, Glenn Merzer. Hi, Glenn. How are you doing? Good. Hi, AJ. Long time no see. Yeah, it's been about five minutes. So. It's been about five minutes. <laughs> I'm going to do today the same thing I did yesterday, um, it, which is I'm going to begin for one or two minutes with a quick climate lesson to explain why the truth is that animal agriculture is the leading cause of climate change. We don't usually hear this when we listen to the news. But the truth is that animal agriculture is the leading cause of climate change. Now, yesterday on AJ's video where she had uh, the chef Mark Sirkvenik as her guest, I did two minutes about something called carbon opportunity costs. So you could always check that out if you didn't see yesterday's video. Today's lesson is on pasture maintenance fires. 40% of the land surface of the earth is being grazed. Uh, cattle, sheep, goats, 40% of the non-ice land surface of the earth. That's too much. That's about 40% too much. So we have to stop that. But the way grazing is done all over the world is that the, the ranchers um, burn every year whatever the cows don't eat. So there's vegetation left that the cows didn't find delicious. The, the ranchers burn it down. And this is an image on the front cover of my book. The red is pasture maintenance fires. This is a satellite image, a NASA satellite image. And what you'll notice is that the red is very close to a lot of areas of brown. The brown is desert. And the red, the pasture maintenance fires, is what helps create desert. It degrades the soil. So it's even very, very difficult to quantify how much we're hurting the earth because we created the Sahara Desert, we meaning human beings. The Sahara Desert 10,000 years ago was a forest. And human beings began chopping down trees and having pasture maintenance fires and it became a desert within the last 10,000 years. That's when agriculture started within the last 10,000 years. So when you think of how much damage we did to the earth by creating all these deserts from the Sahara to the Gobi, that's terrible for the climate. And obviously if we do that for the, to the rest of the world, if someday we have the Amazonian desert and the California desert, we're not going to be able to feed ourselves. So that's today's lesson on climate. And uh, it's my pleasure now to introduce one of the many wonderful chefs who have recipes in this book, um, Joanne Irwin. She teaches uh, nutrition and cooking uh, on Cape Cod. She does uh, Zoom classes. Um, she also, uh, 10 years ago, she formed something called the Green Nosh Group of Cape Cod. Uh, they have monthly gatherings. Uh, seven years ago, she organized uh, the Plant-Based Chef Challenge on Cape Cod, in which 15 rest uh, restaurants participated. Um, so I give you now Joanne Irwin. Oh, thank you so much, Glenn. It's just so great to be here with you and Chef AJ. I'm very excited about this. Uh, I wanna thank you for focusing on the work that our Food for Life instructors do all across the country and other, com uh, other countries as well. You know, when I started with PCRM back in 2008, eons ago, I'm one of the senior instructors, <laughs> old instructors, we had about 40 instructors, and now we have, I think, close to uh, 2,000, not 2,000, 200 instructors plus 
all across the country, uh, in India, in England. So we are expanding and spreading the word about plant-based nutrition, not only for health for our bodies, but for the sustainability of our planet as well. And um, just to give you a little bit of a background, when I got into this, let's see, can you all see me okay? Okay, great. When I got into this back in 2006, I thought I was really healthy. I went to my doctor for my physical. And you know how they say, you know, pride comes before the fall? Well, I went bopping in thinking, oh, I'm going to show him my levels are going to be great. And I work out, yada, yada. Well, my LDLs were close to 200. My cholesterol was 246. And, and I sat there stunned. And my doctor, who's plant-based, who hailed from India then, I said to him, you know, I will never take a statin. So he said to me, well, would you be willing to give up beef, pork, lamb, and dairy? And I said, oh, sure, I can do that. And I left his office. I went to Borders Bookstore, if you remember Borders, when it was around. And I actually broke out in a cold sweat. Looking through some of the books and hearing about things like tempeh and seitan and I knew tofu but I went ahead that day and I went cold turkey plant-based and I never looked back it's been a fantastic experience not only did all my numbers come down in four months into normal normal range but the thing that impressed me more than anything was that I had osteoarthritis in this right wrist and I was much younger then. This was back in 2003 that it started. And when I saw him in 2006, he said to me, just wait, just wait. And in four months, I'm in the kitchen chopping and dicing one day, and my wrist no longer hurt. I was so excited that December, I went out, I raked leaves in complete abandon. I painted my hallway myself. And you know, not only did I see the results on my labs, but I felt a tangible change. And as my doctor told me, when your external inflammation leaves, that means your internal inflammation around your organs is waning. So that really solidified it all for me, plus learning from all of the experts from Dr. Barnard, Colin Campbell, Dr. McDougall, uh, Michael Grieger and Chef AJ, everybody. So I've been doing this and um, what I love more than anything is hearing about the health transformations that people have made. So, okay, with that, everybody out there, food is climate, buy the book, get copies, bring it to your local bookstores. We have to spread the word because our mother earth is crying and she needs our help. Together we can make a change. So, okay. The first thing I'm going to make for you today, a recipe that was in the book, is an olive tapenade. Now, I'm a Sicilian Italian, and uh, I gave up my olive oil because oils, believe it or not, are nothing but fat. They sludge the blood. They damage the endothelial lining of our arteries. We don't need it. There's no nutritional value a lot of fat, a lot of calories. So let's begin. The recipe calls for Kalamata olives. I love Kalamata olives. I'm a Sicilian Italian. I love Italian. And these were packed in, and I will show you. You can get Kalamata olives packed in water. Make sure they're packed in water, not oil. And then rinse them anyway for any excess salt on it. So. I have a half a cup of Kalamata olives, a half a cup of green olives with little pimentos. The other uh, recipe are um, roasted red peppers loaded with beta carotene. These are packed in water. Now I do a heck of a lot of cooking, not only for classes, but I love to cook. I love to have dinner parties. And I like to take some shortcuts. So if I don't have time to take my whole red pepper and broil it, blacken it, take the skin off, I use these, these are packed in water. And one little gadget that I love, I love to tell participants about, in Best Buy, it's a little popper and you just go ahead and put it under the lid 
and you hear a little pop and it's so easy to open. Quick, saves the rest. So let's get started. And some of you might be wondering, you know, what, what good is a Kalamata olive? What does it do? Believe it or not, these olives are loaded with excellent nutrition. They have, you wouldn't believe it, an antioxidant called hydroxytyrosol, believe it or not. And it's shown to lower LDL cholesterol and raise the HDL, the good cholesterol. The other things they have found too in the Kalamata olives, it has an antioxidant called gallic acid, which has been shown in studies with rats and rats are really close to us humans, okay, to reduce the symptoms of Alzheimer's. So what I love about this field is that nutrition keeps expanding and we keep learning about all of the wonderful antioxidants and compounds that are in these foods. So we'll get started. My little food processor here. Can you all see this or I could lower my um, screen? Um, it I depends. I, I can see it. So I'm okay. thinking everybody else can. All right. So I'm putting the olives in. Yeah, we can see it good. What's tell tell people what you you go by, your name not, I, not your not your name but your you know what they call you. Oh, plant based Nana. Yeah, yeah, and, and my kids call me Nana Joe. And you know what is so interesting, AJ? When I started eating this way, I wanted to tell everybody when you have good results, you want to share it with the world, your friends, your family. But the old saying is that you're you know you're never a prophet in your own homeland is true. So I think I stopped preaching because people got tired of hearing me. And um, by example means more than anything. So my grandson, who's 15 now, he was about six years old when this happened. I was taking him out for lunch one day. And of course I ordered my veggie burger and my side of steamed broccoli. I won't even tell you what they had. So he looked at me and he says, Nana, do you ever, ever, ever eat anything unhealthy, ever? And I said, well, yes, Logan, there are times when we have family gatherings and there's a big bowl of potato chips. I'll have one or two. I love them. You can't stop eating them. So he, he looked at me and he said, but you know, Nana, when you get down on the floor and play with us, you can get up. And my other granny can't. So I think for a lot of people, seeing the difference and our energy level, vitality, makes more of a difference than preaching. So, okay. So we have the olives, plant-based manna has the olives in here. And the next thing I'm adding are two garlic cloves. Garlic loaded with uh, zinc, even a little calcium. And I'm just squishing it down, giving it a good sock to get the, the skin off comes off very easily when you just hit it. Look at that, how easy that is just to get the skin off, cut the tip. And I'll show you something else that I keep in my freezer too, when I'm lazy, throw that out. All right. Uh, this is a great little tool that I love. It's called an ulu. If any of you have ever seen an ulu or used it, my daughter and her husband brought this back from uh, Alaska. I absolutely love it for chopping and dicing. This is incredibly sharp and it just cuts and dices so easily. I'm just giving this a little cut. Quick and easy, just have to watch your fingers because that's very, very sharp. And here it is nicely diced. So I'm going to add that. I'll put that out of the way. And let's see. I'm going to add, it cools for about an eighth of a cup of the red pepper but I'll just take some of the red pepper out and put it in. Red pepper is loaded with beta carotene, great antioxidant. You know, when you get to know what these foods contain, 
when you go shopping in your grocery store and you're going through the produce aisle, you know, you want to go up and kind of hug the kale a little bit and say thank you. Because all of these foods are given to us to heal. All right. So we have our olives in here, our roasted red peppers, our garlic. What I'm going to add are capers. I love capers. Capers give food such a nice flavoring. So I'm going to add about two tablespoons of capers. Now the recipe in the book calls for red wine vinegar. You can use a lot of different vinegars. I love different vinegars. I'm gonna to use today a fig balsamic vinegar for flavoring. And so we're going to put in just a teaspoon of the vinegar. I'm glad that you like balsamic vinegar because you're gonna get two bottles just for being on the show. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, thank you. I love balsamic vinegar and it makes great um, salad dressings too. You can make your own. That's one of the classes I love to do is to show people how to make different salad dressings without oil. You know, when I was growing up in my home, we had a salad every night, but our dressing was loaded with oil, vinegar and oil. My grandmother lived with us, you know, she was Sicilian Italian. What can I tell you? Okay, I'm going to add some seasonings, a teaspoon of oregano. I don't even like to measure sometimes, just pour it in. And a teaspoon of thyme. We all need more thyme, don't we? <laughs> and to cut up a lemon and put about a teaspoon of lemon zest in it. My little reamer here. That's about the equivalent of a teaspoon and we'll save that lemon. And what we're gonna do is mix this up. We have everything in here, but I, this is a great hors d'oeuvre. When I make it for dinner parties, folks love it. They can't believe it's plant-based. This is a great little Cuisinart blend with a small one, which is nice to use. Okay, let's give it this sniff test. Good. Wow. You know, when I've been doing a lot of classes on Zoom, I, of course, have a lot of food. And I have a best friend who lives here in my condo complex. Uh, we used to do uh, social work together for the department years ago. We were social workers. So she will come over and help me eat all the food. So that's wonderful. Now, to do a nice hors d'oeuvre, what we do, I have some, this is already cooked organic polenta, which is wonderful, which is made with um, corn. So I'm going to cut this, show everybody what you can do with this. Different knives here. Ah, look, slides out. Can you all see this? The polenta? No, no I can't. We can't see your board. Let me, let me lower it. Can you see it now? Yeah, now we can see it perfectly. Perfect. I will get high tech. All right. So I'm just going to slice these into nice rounds. Probably about a quarter of an inch thick. And I couldn't believe it. I was at the regular grocery store yesterday and I saw polenta in a tube. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I found this. I have to tell you, we have a store here on Cape Cod called Ocean State Job Lot. It's big lots in a lot of other states. And they have great products. They have one whole aisle filled with Bob's Red Mill grains, seeds, flowers at a discounted price. So for people who say it's oh too expensive to eat this way, there are ways that you can shop economically and not bust the budget. So, so I'm just going to lay the slices of polenta here. And 
what we do is put some of our nice mix. Use a little spoon. And you just pile that up nicely, make it look pretty. If I were having a dinner party, I would go ahead and slice little pieces of the red bell pepper or a little bit of the olive on the top to make it festive. And bake these in the oven for 350 for about 20 minutes until it's lightly browned. And people rave about it. Just curious, since you went plant-based a little later in life, were you able to influence anyone in your family? That's a very good question. <laughs> I don't know. I um, Some. I would say uh, some in my family. Uh, not everyone. And, uh, you know, I, I've given up the preaching. I think that we just have to uh, lead by example. You know, my grandson always says to me, my 16-year-old, he's a love, oh, now that you're going to outlive all of us. And I said, don't say that. Don't ever, ever say that because we never know what life will bring or what curve ball we're going to get thrown. But here you just bake these, you can decorate them nicely and you have a nice hors d'oeuvre or a nice snack. You can also use the filling in wraps or put it on top of a salad with a lot of greens at night. So that's our olive tapenade. I wonder if you could stick it in the air fryer. Uh, you probably could, sure. And they, you love an air fryer. Yeah, that sounds good. The other thing too, I wanna to say about that, two years ago, I had a terrible fall and I broke my back. Oof. Almost killed myself, quite frankly. And, um, I was in a, in a brace for 12 weeks, a big cumbersome brace for 12 weeks. And, uh, brain bleed and the spinal bleed and the whole nine yards. And you know, when I was in rehab talking to the doctors, the doctor said to me, if you weren't eating this way and working out, you would have a year recovery. And so I'm very, very grateful to plant-based eating. Grateful. I broke my back when I was 22. It's one of the most painful things in the Oh, world. you're kidding. Yeah. Oh. But I was in a body cast for like a year. Really? Yeah. Cool. I was in for 12 weeks. I had burst one vertebrae and fractured another. And um, I continue to this day to still do the workout, you know, that I've gone through in PT. It really helps, makes a difference. So, all right, I'm going to unplug this. Wait, when, when you move too far away, we can't hear you anymore, Nana. Okay. Maybe Santa's going to bring me a nice microphone and a good setup for classes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can hear you fine just when you move a little bit to the uh, farther away. All right. I'm going to use my induction cooker for the next recipe because if I turn around and use my, my uh, gas stove, you might not be able to hear. And I want everybody to hear and see. So I will just get ready. Get this ready. We're all set to go with our next recipe, which is quinoa and mushroom saute. Now, I created this recipe some years ago when you know I looked in my fridge and what did I have? I had some leftover quinoa, I had some uh, mushrooms, I always have mushrooms on hand. My own doctor now, who is plant-based, recommends mushrooms multiple times a week. You know, the benefits of mushrooms are outstanding that I will talk about in just a few moments. Okay, so in the recipe, it's going to call for bok choy, mushrooms, quinoa, and I wanna talk about the benefits of these wonderful foods. In the recipe, I'm using an organic uh, tricolor quinoa. Uh, quinoa is the grain with the most protein. It has been 
the mainstay of like the uh, Inca civilization. This is what they used as their protein source. It grows in very high altitudes. And here in our country, um, they can grow it in Colorado at high elevation. So we have quinoa. And the thing about quinoa, it cooks so quickly in 10 minutes. You have to rinse it because the seeds are coated with something called saponin, which can be a little bitter. So if you just rinse it in a very fine sieve, you're fine. And like a half a cup of quinoa with a cup of water cooks in 10 minutes. How easy is that, okay? So we have quinoa. One of my favorite veggies, bok choy. This is baby bok choy. Bok choy has so many fabulous health benefits. It contains folate, which has been shown, believe it or not, to kind of help with any of the um, like DNA damage, which can prevent cancer. It's loaded with zinc, it's loaded with calcium. It's a member of the cruciferous family of veggies, which include, of course, our kale, our collards and our bok choy, broccoli. The, these are powerhouses. And I think that, you know, a lot of times people go into a, a grocery store and they pass the produce section and bok choy does not get the respect it deserves. <laughs> so I love it. It has a really nice, sweet, crunchy flavor. So um, I'm going to chop up a little more bok choy. It has been washed. Yeah, bok choy is like Rodney Dangerfield, gets no respect. Right, you got it. And I use the leaves as well too. The other thing it has too is uh, selenium. Selenium is a powerful antioxidant, which um, can slow the rates of, of tumor growth. But the thing with selenium too, and I tell class participants, one Brazil nut a day gives you your daily dose of selenium. So I keep a little package of Brazil nuts in the fridge and indulge. So we have our bok choy, quinoa. Now I wanna talk about mushrooms. I absolutely adore mushrooms. And my own doctor who's plant-based has said, you know, lots of mushrooms, they're loaded with B vitamins. But there was a study done in China years ago, which showed that women who have one button mushroom a day, one, one mushroom, plain old button mushroom, can reduce the risk of recurrence of breast cancer by 64%. That's pretty powerful. Now, if you go ahead and you have a nice hot cup of tea with those mushrooms, they found that it reduces the risk even more. For premenopausal women, it reduces it by 89%, and for postmenopausal women, 82%. So we need to love our mushrooms. And the other thing they say too, they're much better cooked than raw, because raw mushrooms contain a substance called agaritine, which, which can have carcinogenic effect. I still love a raw mushroom every now and then, but if you even lightly saute it, you know, that gets rid of the agaritine. So uh, the other thing we have too are garlic cloves, which I'm going to smash again because I'm going to be grating them today. My knife. Here it is. I was going to do the cooking class in our family home, which was my old house. My son now owns it with a big super kitchen, but to cart everything over, this is just as easy and it works. So I have two mushrooms. Now for folks who are a little bit lazy, perhaps you can go ahead and keep some of these in your freezer. I love these from Trader Joe's. Um, these, this is crushed garlic and it's in little, little squares, little cubes, and each cube is equivalent to one teaspoon. So if you're in a rush and you don't wanna chop or dice, go ahead and pull this out. And they also have ginger. I love ginger. I use a lot of ginger. And here again, Trader Joe's, thank you. Okay. 
So the garlic I'm going to be grating, I'm going to get started and heat this up. All right, and to saute this, I'm gonna be adding just a little bit of water. We don't need to saute in oil. Again, no use for oils. You can saute in water, veggie broth, white wine, uh, soy sauce, uh, balsamic vinegar, whatever. So a little bit of water. And this is a salad master cookware, which we use in our classes. And the other um, ingredient to our scallions. Now these scallions I grow in my garden. I have a little patio garden in my condo. And what's so neat about scallions is that when you buy scallions in the school, store, you cut off the tip with the little root and you put that root in the soil. And I have grown scallions all spring and summer long. Don't have to buy them. And did you go off? We'll check on that. And then uh, the other thing, I freeze them. After I chop them up, I keep them frozen. So I'm feeling a little sad. I was out this morning picking the rest of my kale, washing it, putting it in the freezer so I can keep it bagged because my garden is just about done. So I'm gonna chop up some salmons. And scallions are a member of the allium family of vegetables, which includes our onions and our garlic and our chives, and they're powerful cancer fighters. So we have scallions and here we go. And I'm even going to add some more that I keep frozen. I'm gonna throw in some more scallions. I love this salad, it's one of my favorites. It has such a great taste. Okay. So this is heating nicely. Just let this get a little soft. And if you don't have a scallion, use a sweet onion if you want. I'm gonna put this down so everybody can see. There we go. And now I'm going to add the bok choy, which has been sliced to baby bok choy. Do you ever use an Instant Pot, Nana? Oh, I love my Instant Pot. And I love your red lentil recipe, your red lentil chili in the Instant Pot. Yep, that's a good one. Now, my favorite um, cooking appliances are in the Instant Pot, believe it or not. Uh, my microplane and my Vitamix are off. Oh. So, you know, even in my condo kitchen, I used to have a huge big kitchen, but even in a, in a small kitchen, you can cook healthy. A lot of people think you need this huge big kitchen to cook healthy food. No way. Just get the right ingredients, a lot of motivation, a lot of know-how, and be open to the wonderful changes that will happen in your body. Now I'm adding some button mushrooms. Again, fantastic cancer fighters. Right, that, that's crazy that only one a day helps prevent breast cancer. I mean, everybody can eat one a day. One a day, a recurrence, especially for breast cancer survivors. And that's what I tell um, you know, my Food for Life participants, especially women who are breast cancer survivors to load up on mushrooms. I have a lot of dear friends now who are dealing with various forms of cancer. And uh, you know, what's amazing to me, I just had a call from a friend today whose daughter 
is diagnosed with stage two breast cancer and her daughter is very afraid of soy. Well, we know that soy offers protection, even for people with breast cancer. If you do the research, follow what Dr. Grieger writes about, um, about the studies that are done with soy and breast cancer, preventing cancer and heart disease, soy is a friend. So what? Nana, Nana uh, Lori tuned in a bit late and wanted to know how long you've been plant-based. Since 2006. 2006. That's 15 years. I know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, you're, you're probably going to outlive all your friends. No, don't, don't say that. Anything can happen. I, I really, I really quake when people say that. Well, I'm sorry. And especially, especially after my fall, quite frankly. Oh no. It's just, that's what Dr. Goldhammer said happened to his mother. What was that? That she outlived all her friends because she was yeah. this way. Yeah. Well, I'm grateful for the years I had and for the people in my life, many who've come in and, and been angels um, to teach me and educate me. I mean, the doors that opened, I started doing private cooking classes in 2007 when my doctor had me do some uh, for his staff. And then uh, a reporter heard about it and she did an article in the paper on my eating, my transformation. And that's when I started. And then another angel came my way and told me about PCRN. But what happened? 2008, I was in Florida and my doctor from the cave called me and they were having their first ever health fair. And who was going to be the keynote speaker but Dr. Esselstyn. He wanted me to come up and do the cooking demo. Well, I said I'd go anywhere to hear Dr. Esselstyn, right? And I flew up and Anne, his wife, was with him. And when I talked to her, I told her I'd heard about PCRM and I applied. And she said, you need to be doing this. So she emailed Dr. Barnard right away. And that's how I got into PCRM. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my garlic and I'm going to grate it with my microplane and grate two cloves of garlic over this. Give it a nice sip. This is a great kitchen tool, the microplane, for grating zest, garlic, ginger, orange zest, lemon zest, you name it. That's so good. Okay. <laughs> I never thought about using it for garlic. Oh, it works great. The garlic has to be firm, otherwise it gets mushy. One of my favorite, favorite ginger. I absolutely love ginger. It's anti-inflammatory, soothing on the digestive system. I buy it, I you know, scrape off some of the skin, but then just grate it right in with the microplane. And what's so nice too, is that in the afternoon, grate your ginger and put it in a mug of hot water and you have delicious ginger tea. The compounds, the ginger all are, well, they also have cancer fighting properties, but very good for our digestive system and anti-nausea as well too. love ginger. And when you make a salad like this, you can, after a while, adjust the ingredients, add more or less to your liking. I love a lot of ginger. Okay. If what you else? like ginger, then you can pick ginger vinegar from California balsamic when you get your two free bottles as one of oh, your choices. Thank you. That's so exciting. All right, now I'm going to be adding the quinoa. This is the tricolor cooked quinoa. Add that in. So when you're taking a look at something like this, a nutritious lunch, a salad, you have your protein, 
You have your fiber from the bok choy. You've got great cancer fighters flavor. And now what I'm going to add too is a little bit of the um, coconut aminos for flavoring right there. You can use soy sauce, you can use breads, but this is a lower in sodium. So I'm just gonna add a little bit. And a dish like this is great over other greens. Have a nice sweet potato on the side and you are all set. I know what I'm eating tonight. Yeah, that looks great. Very, very tasty. What did you make? What did you make for Thanksgiving, or what did you have for Thanksgiving this oh, year? Oh, for Thanksgiving. Well, true confessions. I have dear friends. Um, my dear friend, she's like a second daughter. She's a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma uh, in remission since 2002. This gal has had multiple surgeries. Years ago, she had Crohn's disease, had to have her entire colon removed. And she was one of the first to have an internal pouch put in, inserted internally for rectum. Um, she's had, well, multiple surgery, shoulder surgery, um, hysterectomy. They're not plant-based eaters. So I did cook a little turkey breast for them, but for myself and my partner, I made, this is a wonderful recipe, a pecan mushroom wellington with mushroom sauce. So that is a fantastic, talk about a gourmet tasting dish made with mushrooms, pecans, and it's in a pe pepperidge farm uh, flaky uh, crust. It's absolutely delicious. So I did a lot of cooking gave them the leftovers and um, my partner and I, Bill, we enjoyed our Wellington, which I am going to make again for our December green nosh. We meet monthly, support one another in plant-based nutrition. A lot of times we have guest speakers, we show movies, we go to restaurants on the Cape. Matter of fact, I'm so excited. We have a new bookstore cafe, totally vegan, that just opened up in Hyannis called Bread and Roses. And the owner, Nate, is personal friends with Dr. Neil Barnard. He knows all the players. He's been involved in animal rights, agriculture, uh, climate sustainability. So things are expanding on the Cape, and I'm excited about that. Very cool. What'd you have for dessert for Thanksgiving? Apple pie. Make yeah. it or buy it? No, Lynn made it. My friend made it. Yeah, she made it. Yeah. Nice. So it was really good. It was nice to be there because she has not been allowed to be out. A doctor gave her very strict orders to avoid crowds. She is, you know, immune suppressed. So after she had her booster, a doctor who's head of the blood diseases at Beth Israel in Boston, he checked her antibodies and she does have immunity from the booster. So he told her she can be around people who are vaccinated. Um, my own daughter has been dealing with COVID for like six weeks and um, she's recovering, but it's been a horrible experience for her. So I've been cooking, bringing her healthy food, leaving her at a door, waving through the window, but I now have the okay to go in and to be there for her. So I'm excited about that. Nice. Uh, there's a question from Dina. Do you use nutritional yeast? Oh, absolutely. Yes. And this is a Red Star nutritional yeast. And I also use Bragg's and it's loaded with B vitamins. It gives such a wonderful taste. I use it in my French toast uh, batter. I use it in soups. I use it when I make my uh, plant-based cheeses. So this is a staple in my kitchen. Absolutely great product. Nice. Yep. You're going to be teaching a class next year, right? I have. Yes. Uh, I've been teaching number one for Cancer Alliance of Naples is a nonprofit. And what they do, they're wonderful. I've been affiliated with them since 09. And they 
provide monetary support for families who are financially struggling and going through cancer treatment. They're a wonderful organization. So I started teaching with them in 09 and about two years later, they received grant money. So all my classes are grant funded. They're free to participants. So I've been doing that on Zoom since I'm not there in person, of course. And, um, but I do have a series, January, February, it'll be an in-person series at our family home. And uh, I'm excited about that, hope it fills. It's a five week kickstart for people who want to just, let's have a new start, a new you, a new year, a new you, let's get healthy. That's great. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Been doing this a long time. But, you know, I have to share one story for people. And I'm going to turn this off now. Years ago, okay. uh, I did a private cooking class for a friend. She brought seven of her girlfriends over. And we had so much in common looking forward to getting to know her. But both of us were busy. You know, our lives got busy with grandchildren. And about four years ago, she contacted me and she said, I have to tell you my story. So we met. She went to her doctor for her regular physical. And this is exactly how she told me. He conveyed this information. He said, oh, all your labs are great. But I have to tell you, you're in stage four kidney failure. And she was absolutely shocked. He gave no nutritional advice. What he told her is that we'll just keep on checking and the next step is dialysis. She went to my doctor who was still in practice at the time. He's now in management. And uh, he, he agreed to work with her. He put her on a strict plant-based diet with no more than 13 grams of protein a day and drinking plenty of water. And over two years, her kidney function returned to normal. And she said to me, I had to tell you my story because I thought that you would judge me for not eating plant-based. And I said, you know, number one, I, I am not the food police. People make choices. And, um, but she's a firm believer. She said, this has made all the difference in her life. And I, I've had people come to classes with heart disease, not needing surgery, um, type two diabetes, that they're able to get off their medications. One woman who's battled with high blood pressure, she, we had a five week kickstart and at the end she got all weepy. She said, this is the first time my blood pressure has normalized. I mean, I get goosebumps even hearing that again. You know, it makes a difference. Food is the new medicine. And not only for our health, but, but for the planet, you know, we have to really wake up to what animal agriculture, dairy are doing to the degradation of this planet. You know, we have one planet and I'm concerned for the, the sake of my grandchildren and their children. You know, what is it gonna be like for them down the road? But you know, the other thing too, AJ, I would like to add, which is really important. And I, I bring this up, in all of my classes because not only is nutrition key to health and wellness, um, but stress uh, plays a, an unbelievable impact on our health and wellness and on our stress hormones. And uh, two years ago, I took the radical remission training. It was a two week training. And Dr. Kelly Turner, who was- <laughs> oh, Sorry about Hello? that. It's okay. <laughs> There are so many other factors among people she has researched who had radical remissions. Um, she got her PhD at UC Berkeley and she did some work too at Sloan Kettering in New York with cancer patients. And not only is nutrition, all of these people who had radical remissions, the one factor that they changed was their nutrition. And many of them, including plant-based nutrition, giving up animal protein and dairy, but it also has to do with our reasons for living and our social support and what we say to ourselves. You know, what, what, what are we saying internally? What about the joy in our life? Are we holding on to anger, negative emotions? We have to erase that. So there are so many factors. I, I like to try to talk about that as well, too, in my classes. Wow. Well, that, we have some, some lovely comments about you from, for example, 
I uh, just saw it, that they, they thanking me for putting you on. People are really liking you. My Nana was nothing like you. Oh, aren't you sweet? Well, she had diabetes oh. and all, every single disease. She, you know, she ate the traditional standard Jewish diet. Yeah, yeah. Roberta says, love her. Thanks for putting her on. Oh, how sweet. I, I didn't pay anybody to do that. <laughs> That's really nice. I, I've really been blessed. I've, I've met some fantastic people over these years that I've been doing this. And, uh, you know, I like to leave a lot of it to the younger people. We have so many wonderful young instructors who are so excited about this and, you know, creating uh, just wonderful resources for people to continue to, to try and to learn and grow and to make these important changes in their lives. And, and you are, a, you know, a big, big, advocate and resource. It's wonderful. Um, I'm very blessed. My new doctor on the Cape is totally plant-based. And uh, when I fell, after I fell and I met him for the first time, he says, Joanne, a combination of prunes, soy, edamame, and almonds heal bones. So I was just ingesting during my whole healing process. I love prunes anyway, um, you know, stewed prunes prunes and almonds and soy. And recently when I went to him, his other advice was Joanne, two apples a day and a half a teaspoon of omelet powder can eradicate health inflammation. You know, so he's really a great resource. I'm very blessed to have him on Cape Cod. I know a lot of my friends are like, where do I find a good doctor, you know, who uh, understands about plant-based nutrition and can give them good advice. That was really interesting what you said about your wrist, how that when the outside inflammation heals, the inside inflammation is healing. Yeah. yeah, I could not, I could not do this with my wrist. Many times I would wake up in the middle of the night, if I slept on my wrist, it would be painful. And, and what scared me, my grandkids were little then. And you know, when you pick up a little kid under your arms, it hurts. I thought, ah, oh, I'm too young for this. And I was too young for that then. But what a difference. It's the food. It is the food. Do you ever speak anywhere like to maybe senior citizen assisted living or somewhere to show an example of what life could be like? I do. Yeah, I do. I just, I just, just did a presentation for a women's group at, at a local church and it was well received. So I do a lot of that too. You know, I enjoy sharing this with people. So uh, we'll continue to spread the word on the Cape. You know, we're growing on the Cape and a lot of interest in plant-based nutrition. And uh, I have a lot of great people. Matter of fact, one gal who's part of our Greenosh group, she is a retired Air Force doctor. She was an ophthalmologist and she became certified recently in lifestyle medicine. And we're looking at doing something together. She can do coaching and consultation and I can do the cooking classes. So we have that in the works. Wow, that's so good. Are we allowed to ask you your age or is that uh, too much to ask? I no, you know, and I have to tell you, I'm laughing. Excuse me, but I quick I get a drippy nose. My father used to say it's the old age disease. Okay, I'm 75. I turned 75 in September, and I had to laugh. I was telling my partner I went down to Florida recently for 10 days, and um, you know you go through security, and when you're a certain age, you have to take your shoes off. So I'm bopping through, and I've got my stuff on the conveyor belt. And one of the TSA gals comes over and she said, oh, you have to take your shoes off. And I said, well, I'm 75. She said, oh, my God, you could have fooled me. I said, do you want to see my license, which you showed anyway? And I looked at her and I said, it's the beans and greens. You know, when you're eating healthy, that's the new cosmeceutical. It really is. You drink plenty of water, you take care of yourself, and you eat these foods that affect your, your skin and your vitality. It makes all the difference in the world. So... Um, and I continue to work out, you know, I go to the gym and, and I do work out and I continue to do exercises for my back. Matter of fact, when I met with my neurologist in May and he took more x-rays, he said, you know, Joanne, he said, your, your rupture is stable and your alignment has slightly improved. So, you know, that says something to me, you know, we have to keep moving to keep the bones healthy. 
Absolutely. It sounds like somebody's at the door and they're going to have, a, they're going to have a good meal. That's like perfect timing. <laughs> we'll see who they are, if they get invited in or not. <laughs> that is so funny. Well, you're just a delight. Did you want to like show the plated recipe, finish it up that way or? Oh, well, yeah, let's see. No, I'm like, you know, yeah. I'm just... Pat, Pat is saying 75 OMG, maybe late 50s, maybe early 60s. Wow. Oh, sweet. No, and, 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 you know, and I, I'm, to be, you know, to be honest, the only thing I do, I might give myself a facial once a month, maybe twice a year I'd have a facial. And I will say I had a droopy eyelid. I did quite a while ago have a Botox on one eye. That is it natural. Wow. Well, Lori so, says, what? She looks much younger. Do you have like a, other than eating well, do you have a skincare routine or any other advice for us youngins? I'm, I'm well, kidding up. I'll yeah, I, do, I do have, I do have a skincare routine. I mean, cleansing, exfoliating. And I think the important thing to use is a hyaluronic acid on your skin right? You know, and, and a good moisturizer, which I use and a sunscreen. Yeah. You sunscreen. Know, I cannot, you know, it took me 60 years, but sunscreen, I do not go outside without sunscreen and a full coverage. I took a long time what my mom was saying to listen to them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so but, anyway, here, here is the, um, uh, the olive top and which I'm going to be putting in the oven to bake for about 20 minutes tonight. Lori says, what? She looks much younger. Kat says, you look beautiful. Oh, aren't you sweet? Thank you. Thank you. Well, I like, you know, I fixed up a little bit here for the show. <laughs> no, I mean, I've, seen, I've seen her in person. I met her on the cruise. She's stunning. So, oh, you're so um, sweet. Anne asks, when did you do the PCRM course? Uh, I did PCRM. A matter of fact, I was certified. It was November 2008. It was the day after Barack Obama was elected president of our country. And I can remember, drove down to DC and the, the air, the atmosphere in the air, and we would take trains back and forth, whatever, was so exciting. So I did the training with PCRM in 08. Uh, I did the Colin Campbell Nutrition Studies Program 2009-10. Uh, I did the CHIP training uh, two years ago, certified as a CHIP instructor. And then online, I did a vegan mastery program uh, which was very, very interesting. Great speakers, good information. So I guess you call me a forever student. I mean, my, my background is teaching and social work and school counseling. So combining all of that, uh, you know, teaching, coaching, and, and just being there for people, this fits in very well. Yeah. All right. Well, Pat says you're a natural beauty. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. And this show is good for people's self-esteem. We got such a wonderful group that watch the live show. We call them the Zamunity and they tune in almost every day. And they're just a lovely bunch. That is great. Well, my partner, Mr. Bill, who's a fantastic guy, he's down in Naples, had to go back. And I told him, you're going to be my critiquer in chief. So I'll see what he says. <laughs> now, is he plant-based? He better be. He is. Oh, no, I would never. I would never be with anyone who is not plant-based. There is no way. Uh -uh. Yay, no. Yay. He is, is plant-based. And you know, you know what's wonderful? No matter what I make by trying new recipes, sometimes I might give them a B minus. I love to try new recipes. He loves everything and is so appreciative. So uh, I'm very, very grateful for that. I've had other experiences where people have, oh, don't want to eat this. <laughs> oh boy let's yeah. see another nice comment oh bring her back says rita sure oh, oh, we'll get oh, her for May. yeah susan oh. says she's beautiful looks so young now oh my gosh wow yep. yeah let's see thank you uh my ole <laughs> <Retinol. laughs> no it's the greens it's the greens baby it is, it's, it is the grains and the greens and plenty of water and, and good try to get good sleep you know, yeah. it doesn't always happen, but um, the, these foods are, are healing in so many different ways. So I'm very, I'm, I'm so grateful for the angels who've come into my life. Um, Jill Avnik, who is one of our instructors, she's one of our older instructors too. She's the one who back in 2007 told me about PCRM. So, you know, way back then, there was not much information on the net. I mean, you, you go on the net and you're looking for plant-based recipes, hardly anything. And now 
we have just a wealth of information, you know, and people offering uh, eBooks and recipes. And I love Dr. John McDougall's site because everything on his site is free. And he has great articles, position papers, recipes. So the yep. resources are out there. Yep. Queen of Airy says that you're wonderful and she loves the recipe. And Elena asks, how much vitamin B12 do you take and what brand? Oh, I take, um, let me, and, they, and she also says that you're an inspiration. Oh, thank you. Well, I, I, think I it's time for you to write a book. Jo uh, I'm going to call you Nana. I love that plant-based Nana. Yeah. Thank you. Well, the book I'm working on right now, I've had a project that's been ongoing since 2003 are my parents' World War II letters and, uh, over 1300 in number. And it's been a big project. And I had two books made for my children for legacy. And now I'm working on something for Amazon. So maybe after that, I will look at something plant-based. But the B12, hold on. Right, and Lori wants to know if you take any other supplements. I do. Hey guys, uh, at 1230, I'm doing an Iron Chef against Ke Chef Carol Levy. It'll be on the Plant Powered Metro uh, Facebook and YouTube page. So make sure you watch. It's free. Excellent. Uh, this is nature's bounty B12. And it's 5000 micrograms that I take on Sunday. So always on Sunday, my B12 5000. So and that's that's the one supplement we need. The other supplement I do take is Dr. Joel Furman's uh, multivitamin for women made especially for women because his vitamin for women does not contain vitamin A or E, which in supplemental form can be toxic. You wanna to get your vitamin A, your beta carotene from your foods and your vitamin E from your foods. So I like his vitamin. That's basically what I take. But, uh, <laughs> any other questions? No, just come I, back. That's great. I, Thank you so much, Joanne. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And thank you for all the work that you continue to do, AJ. You're a, you're a delight. Oh, thank you. And thanks for contributing recipes to this wonderful book. We have a link in the show notes on how to get bonus recipes if you order it. And we have five more amazing chefs that were contributors coming back this week as we continue with Food is Climate Week. Tomorrow is Cindy Thompson, and she's going to be making lox. Can you believe it? Vegan lox? Wow. That sounds amazing. All right. Take care. It's so nice to see you again, Joanne. Take care. You too, AJ. Thank you, Glenn. Be well, Thanks. everybody. And guys, come back in 30 minutes, not on this channel, but on the Plant Powered Metro New York YouTube channel. And I am going to be doing an Iron Chef. Take care, Joanne. Bye-bye. Thank you. Much love.